Hello everyone. So for today, we will we will discuss about you know, an introduction about bioethics. But to help us understand what is bioethics, we must first define the word ethics. The subject ethics, as you have taken it last semester, came from the Greek word ethos, which means customs or behaviors. Now, when we look at this simple definition, it can be deduced that ethics refers to your behaviors. A behavior is more attributed to your human behavior and is therefore inherent in you as human beings. Now, the term ethos has an equivalent meaning in Latin, which means moris or morals. Now, therefore, we can understand from this very definition that ethics is not to be understood as specific to a nation or something else, but is rather inherent in you. Now, ethics, therefore, is a mental set, a disposition or values. No? It refers to your uh, values, being humans. It refers to your disposition as, as a person and the values that you have when you were raised. Now, as a science, ethics is defined as it deals with the morality, rightness or wrongness of your human action. Now, in ethics, there are two, there are two sets, no? There are two sets of actions that we, that we judge, not really judge, no? But assess, no? For the rightness or wrongness. Those involuntary actions, no? Those involuntary actions like winking of the eye, like the gurgling of your stomach, those are not subjected to your, uh, to ethical scrutiny. Those actions, those involuntary actions, are called acts of man. But when a person acts voluntarily, then that is the subject of scrut uh, ethical scrutiny. Now, that action is considered as a human act, which can be determined whether it is right or wrong based on the disposition and the values where it will be assessed. Now, as a science, ethics deals with, uh, man, it is meant, no? Uh, rather, when we talk of ethics as a discipline, it is meant for you to exercise your human conduct, both ethical and not ethical. And as a philosophical study, it guides the intellect, no? In discerning the concrete human conduct. Now, in our subject, healthcare ethics, this was first termed as bioethics, okay? Because it encompasses all life sciences. So to make our discussion broad and to make everything um, in the context no, of healthcare, we can use interchangeably the term bioethics. Now, ethics, when combined with the prefix bio, it becomes bioethics, meaning it is concerned, no? with all life sciences, with all procedures that concerns human beings or living things. In our subject, we will uh, focus no, the ethical dimension of caring for a patient. Now, bioethics is uh, started mainly on medicine. But as the practice of medicine expands, no, into nursing, into other allied health sciences, it can be uh, applied it to it as well. Bioethics can be applied to it as well. Now, ethics and nursing is not something new. Indeed, both of them are responsible for the well-being of persons and that they are intrinsically connected. Now, Though medicine concentrated or nursing concentrate more on the physiological and psychological well-being of your patient, no, it did not abstract or go away from the creative aspect and the social aspect of your patients. Good psychological or physiological function usually made it possible for a person to pursue the other goods of life which lead to human fulfillment. Now, bioethics is an applied ethics. No? It is an ethics of medical care, but not the same as medical ethics. 
when we say medical ethics kasi it's the type of uh, it's the type of ethics wherein you are more concerned about the practice of the medical profession likewise when we say nursing ethics nursing is more con- nursing ethics is more concerned on the ethical practice or the ethical aspect or the legal aspect of nursing itself but when we say bioethics or healthcare ethics it is a broader concept it is a broader uh, broader concept that encompasses life sciences and all the procedures that you give to your patients. Now, bioethics is not just mainly concerned with what is right medical procedure, the wrong medical procedure, but rather, it also concerns with the investigation of practices and developments in the life sciences and biomedical fields. It involves ethical ethical considerations when it comes to research, when it comes to new discoveries and new procedures. Now, all pertinent fields of study must be pulled together in an attempt to settle certain moral dilemmas. In bioethics, there will be always a mixture or a concoction of different practices to resolve ethical dilemmas. So that's why when you resolve a case in your group study, it's not enough that you use the knowledge that you have only in nursing. But also you have to read other researches. You also have to read other resources so that you'll be more informed when you, when you decide on your cases. Now, bioethics is important mainly because it is important to uh, conduct an appropriate and judicious healthcare procedure. Because... Performing, bio, uh, be, performing a medical procedure without ethical concept or without, without ethical consideration would mean you're just merely performing a medical procedure, a technical procedure. Without bioethics, without healthcare ethics, uh, your medical care or your nursing care would just be like doing it on a dummy. You're not considering a person as a human, which defeats the very purpose of nursing. Now, therefore, bioethics or healthcare ethics is necessary in providing humanistic care to your clients. It is also necessary to grasp the ethical dimension of your nursing and medical procedures. And it is necessary because we want to protect okay, the people that were entrusted to us. Without ethics, without healthcare ethics, we would be so careless to care for our patient. That's the irony of it. You care so carelessly because you did not, you do not have ethics, or you do not know, you do not value healthcare ethics. So let's have a review of some of the ethical schools of thought that we have uh, discussed last semester. Do you still remember ethical relativism, which the ethical doctrine that claims that there are no universal or absolute moral truths? You, you judge or you base an action, rightness or wrongness, based on you know, someone's standard, based on the standard where the action occurred. Well, ethical relativism is good at some point because it does not impose uh, it does not impose um, rigid standards to a particular situation however ethical relativism is uh, is dangerous because uh, the value of universal truth which is important in healthcare because healthcare is multicultural, becomes obsolete. No? Ethical values, no? or ethical relativism rather, contradicts common beliefs and ordinary experiences in several ways. It removes the essence of one's duty in determining whether an action is right or wrong. 
The second type of or the second school of thought that we will discuss is your situation ethics. Now, situation ethics proposes that upon a given situation, one must act in the name of Christian love. In situation ethics, it considers three types of love, the eros, the philia, and agape. Eros is re refers to your romantic love, the love that you have for your partner, to your boyfriends, to your crush, or whatsoever. But in philia, this is what you call your brotherly love. Okay? Philia also involves platonic love or your love for your friends. Okay? So, this two differs from agape. Okay? Because eros and philia have, uh, are the types of love that has, uh, that has uh, reservations. May pagtatangi. When you love someone because you have a vested interest. So in Eros and Philia, uh, in Eros, for example, you have uh, reservations to love only your crush, your boyfriend, or the one who had romantic feelings. In Philia, you also have reservations. You have reservations to love only your friends and those you, who you benefit from. But in Christian love, which is the agape, this is unconditional love. Loving as Christ has loved us. So there are six propositions in this situation ethics. Number one, love is intrinsically good. Number two, the ultimate norm of decision or Christian decision is love. Number three, love and justice are the same for justice is love distributed. And love wills the neighbor's good whether we like him or not. This is the agape uh, aspect no, of situation ethics. Fifth, only the end justifies the means, and the decisions ought to be made situationally, not prescriptively. Now, situation ethics makes it more uh, makes moral decision more flexible and adaptable to varying situations. However, uh, however. Making your uh, making moral decisions flexible encourages contextualism. Okay, and when you encourage contextualism, it may fall again in ethical relativism. Okay. Next is what you call your pragmatism, which is attributed to Charles Pierce, William James, and some some uh, some edu uh, American philosophers like John Dewey. Now, according to pragmatism, what is right are those that are practical, can be worked, and beneficial. Now, if an idea can be made or can be transformed into action, that's the most practical and beneficial way, and it is good. Now, according also to pragmatism, truth can be, can be obtained by experience. No? Truth can be obtained by experience. And when we get something out of it, then the values that we get from it are considered ethical values. Now, this is problematic. Well, number one, uh, well, it sounds uh, workable. No? Being practical sounds workable. Obtaining practical truth is better than having just an idea. Okay? However, this pragmatism is quite problematic because it takes many forms like experimentalism and it, instrumentalism. When we say experimentalism, we try to arrive to a truth by experiment. However, we cannot just arrive to a truth by merely experimenting on it because... Somehow, uh, uh, because somehow, the truth that you will get, no, the truth that you experiment may harm other people, may harm other beings, no, may violate certain laws. Experimentalism is not good, no, because it may use other people to achieve your goals. 
that's why it's also associated with instrumentalism. You use others as an instrument to gain your truth. Okay? Therefore, pragmatism, okay, be, somehow is materialistic. Right? Because you, you focus only on the material things. Okay? You get values from material things. While values can become, can, can somehow come from reason. No? which not necessarily follow from pragma practical uh, solutions. And that pragmatism is also too individualistic. Imagining more, your experience might be different from the others. And having different experience and having different set of values because of pragmatism, you may end up clashing with each other. The last one is your what you call your utilitarianism which is proposed by Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. It says that rightness and wrongness of ethical actions is determined by the goodness or badness of their consequences. No? The principle of utility is the only one principle worth noting because actions are good as they only tend to promote happiness no? and bad actions they produce if they produce unhappiness. In utilitarianism, there is no intrinsically right or wrong action because it is based on the outcomes. Now, we the principle of greatest happiness, no, sometimes called the principle of uh, proportionality, says that the, the best action is the one that has the greatest amount of happiness no? that is beneficial to the greatest number of people. The more people that will benefit from a better from a moral decision, the better. Okay. So I think that's the last of my slide. If you have any questions, I'll start a discussion board, no, a discussion board in our Facebook group. If you have any questions, you can type it there in the comment section, and I will answer as the, the best that I can. Now you can access this video in my uh, in my in my YouTube channel. No? If you have, uh, if you want, you can subscribe, like, and uh, down, uh, download my materials. My my uh, yeah. So that's it. So thank you very much for watching, and hope to see you again.